with the World Championship match now officially over, I wanted to take a look at some of the biggest blunders that happened in this World Championship match. Now, of course, these are the best players in the world, but under time pressure and just the fact that they're human, it is natural to make mistakes. And in this World Championship match specifically, there were a couple very shaky um, and pretty bad mistakes and blunders, especially from Jan. So I definitely do want to dive into every single blunder that was made. Now, to stay objective, I'm going to be using chess.com's classification for what a blunder is rather than simply classifying moves myself. Now, in game number one, there were no blunders according to chess.com. So moving on to game number two, and here there was only one blunder, and it's actually a blunder by Jan. And it was this move, B takes A4. Now, in this position, this move is a blunder because it gives white great chances uh, to draw this position and to get some counterattack possibilities. Black is totally dominating in this position before taking, and something like queen to g7 would simply keep the black advantage uh, because it targets some of the weaknesses that white has. But by taking, what you do is allow white to get a lot of good aggressive chances. First of all, this pawn on a7 is rather weak, and you can imagine the rook coming to the a file and pressuring it. Also, this pawn on c6 is not particularly strong, and the queen is now tied down to that uh, in many cases. So the point is white gets great attacking chances here, and white comes back into the game. Moving on to game number three, there were no blunders. Game number four, also no blunders. Number five, also no blunders. So a series of very strong games played, and this makes sense because if you can recall, in the start there were many draws almost perfect games, but now we come to this one right here. And in this game, there were two blunders, one by Jan, one by Magnus. First, let's look at the blunder that Magnus played. It was this move Rook to D1. And if you can see by the position, this was one of the more exciting games. It was the first win, the first decisive result, also the longest game in World Championship history. It was definitely quite interesting. Now, Rook to D1, the issue with this move is that it keeps uh, some sort of a pin on this file. And if the knight were to ever try to venture out and maybe attack this king, well, you lose your rook on d1, which is why better was something like rook to c2. And the point is, you're defending your rooks, and now the knight is indeed free to move. And typically, just generally speaking and conceptually, your rooks want to be connected. So that is indeed uh, a better choice here for white, but this just to uh, sort of make this move a bit more understandable, Magnus was under very serious time triple here, I think under a minute when he played this move, so it is very much understandable. Moving on to game number seven, we had no blunders. Game number eight, also no blunders. Number nine, we did have one blunder from Jan, and it was quite a decisive one. This was one of the worst blunders um, that we've seen in the match. Um, maybe the worst blunder. I mean, I was watching some of the commentary and some of the other grandmasters that were looking at this just totally laughed at this move and said it was very much... Uh, super shocking that at the world championship level, this move would be played. Now, why is this move so bad? I mean, it makes quite a lot of sense to play c5. I mean, the pawn is clearly under attack. If you can get the pawn to c6 at some point uh, and maybe defend it if it were to be pressured, then that seems really perfect. I mean, the pawn here with the bishop anchoring uh, down on b7, it seems really good for white. Well, the whole point is that black has this really nice tactical idea, c6, and now the pawn is defended, first of all, so the bishop can never take, and as it turns out, the bishop is very low on squares. The bishop is actually trapped here, and through one of these two moves, or maybe a combination of them, the bishop is simply going to be lost. So the fact that the bishop uh, gets trapped after c6 is, is very shocking that Jan missed this, especially considering the fact that it's you know, only one move and then the bishop's trapped. It's not this five or six or seven move long combination to trap and win the bishop. 
it's simply one move. C6 here, and the bishop's gone. Magnus did indeed went up uh, or go on to win this game. Now the following game, game number 10, there were no blunders. And finally, in the final game, there was indeed one blunder. And again, Bayon. And it happened right here, g3. Now I think this one is definitely more understandable. Before the move g3, as you can see from the e engine eval, it's a very drawish position. Um, but Jan needs win. At this point, he's down a couple of uh, games in the match. So he needs to spice things up and try to make the game um, at, in some way uh, more uh, uneven and try to get a win. And the way that he tried to do this was by winning some material. But here, Magnus continued in a brilliant way, literally, by taking here, as you can see, the brilliant move. And even though white does win material, the issue um, is that black totally infiltrates. And maybe Jan did not uh, totally estimate the power of this attack. But, I mean, you can imagine the pieces coming in. It's going to be game over. This king is just too naked on the king side. And uh, black did indeed go on to win this game. So again, a bit more understandable because at this point, Jan is down three games. He has to, you know, in some way spice things up and try to get uh, some uneven position where he has chances for his opponent, uh, Magnus Carlsen, to blunder. But this was maybe not the right moment or the right way to do it. So hopefully you enjoyed going through these blunders. It, it shows that, you know, everyone is human. And even though the game did look very drawish in the start, even in that section, there were quite a few blunders. And of course, in the latter section of the match, there were also many blunders made. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I will see you next time. Peace out.